Central Mass Chronicles, a show where we take a look, whether it is national issues, whether it is state issues, whether it is local issues, but we do it with a Central Mass focus. I know that you say every week, Hank, you say national, you say state, and every week I come back to local <laughs> issues, but there's a lot of local stuff going on. As a matter of fact, this time around with our esteemed panel, Steve Jones D'Agostino, Hilda Ramirez, Roberta Schaefer here with us. We're going to pick up right where we left off last week because uh, what we were talking about last week when it came to the superintendent, the superintendent, we all felt that it was probably headed towards she was going to be offered a contract. But Hilda, she now does have a new three-year contract. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to get into and talk a little bit about is that three-year contract, what are the issues that still then are surrounding the school? And a particular interest to me was that she gets a contract, but they say here's like 14 action points. I don't think I've heard of that before. Right. right. Well, I, I think that that was part of trying to negotiate in terms of, I think, you know, for, for a lot of us, it's not so much the person, it's the role of leadership and, uh, and what's not um, happening in the school. So when we look at wh what is going on, the data is still there and pointing to uh, really low and dismal outcomes for Latino students. And I think that what we're trying to say, at least from my role at the Latino Education Institute, is let's work together because we, you can't do it alone. That, that, that's an issue that crosses a lot of boundaries and crosses a lot of areas. And we want to be at the table to try to figure out how do we help students with chronic absenteeism? How do we help um, English learners who right now have a 5% dropout rate? And so, um, the, you know, the suspensions has become a sensitive issue, but nonetheless, there are practices that other districts have taken to improve um, the Can the you give me school. one that other districts have done that Worcester is not doing? So like um, a lot of other districts are doing a lot more to do um, restorative justice practices or really involving, for example, some schools, including some in Worcester in the past, have done uh, rooms where, they, like if a kid is having a, a really bad day, and so they have a, a, a separate room where they will have a guidance counselor and they will have a group of students that really need to just really take some time off from the classroom and be kind of reconfigured in terms of what is going on in their lives and then go back to this but is before a practice. I bring Roberta in here restorative justice yes, I was what is ask, yeah, can you explain, ask me, that? explain so that, that to me so uh, what it is is practicing a lot of restorative justice practices I was trained in it is really using uh, communication circles and and using a lot of strategies that gets deep into the person getting to know the the the, the, the person and then getting to know what is it that is it, what is it that's causing them to 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 act in a certain way and working with that person very deeply uh, with with people that are trained to do this to get at the, the, the source of the problem, right? So, so it's just exposing like root causes. The root causes of the problem, because there's always, uh, you know, when kids are angry, when things are going off, there's always a root cause. And in some cases, let's say there is violence between two uh, students, then it's getting to a place where they both see that they the, 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 where they're wrong. Is this new personnel or is this something we already have the ability to do in the school system? Well, I, I know that, for example, Lisa Dwyer had done a lot of work at North to train some of the staff in doing this. But in order for this to be effective, the whole school has to practice this. Mm -hmm. There are practices that happen, um, like circles that go on in, you know, in the morning, in the evening. We did it at the youth center. That's, that's how I was trained. I was trained deeply. All the staff, everybody has to to be aligned to this is the practice that we're going to use. We're going to do all right. we can so to So interesting, not there's more things, and I just I just want to make right. sure that in our limited time we get everybody into the conversation. So Roberta, Steve, we'll, we'll bring you yeah, in. Yeah, I just wanted to build ask on what Hilda why, said. Why is it called restorative justice? What because are you, what you're are you restoring? restoring the justice of like so. You, so part of it, the outcome of it, is that if you've done wrong, you're going to help to restore that and to say um, uh, to apologize and have other ways of getting to uh, to understand that you've caused harm and to understand that another person is, was a victim in that and to restore that relationship, restore the, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the why you did the wrong. I don't know if that was in the 14 points. Yeah. I mean, the 14 no, points seem to be, I mean, that seems to be, uh, to be honest strategy, with you, something though. that is, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, that might be more of what the 14 yeah. points should be. Well, well so, so the from my point of view, the, the 14 points of view is is all, you know, kind of, 
inputs. First of all, um, I think one of the things you asked uh, us to think about is whether this was a vote of confidence. Mm. And I, I think it was a very partial vote of confidence uh, in that all these um, requirements were attached to uh, the contract. It wasn't just, you know, you've got the three years. No, I agree. And let me just uh, set that up real quick. So you, yeah. so you had a vote in which you had five votes yay. Three of those were firm votes yay. I would say that uh, the mayor and Molly McCullough were a little more, not iffy perhaps, but they really tied it to the points to that the we're point, talking right, about now. Right. And then you had two outright no votes. Right. So, so just let me say, so okay, so it's a, it's a, um, a partial vote of confidence. I mean, there wasn't enough time or discussion before this, the, the uh, contract was up for renewal to discuss, um, you know, all what, what she had accomplished and what she had not accomplished. So this was kind of, you know, a last minute thing. Okay, because several people wanted to renew her. Well, there are some problems. These people are coming and complaining. The system is racist. Well, so let's add these things. My problem with the additions of the, the 14 points and is, is that it seemed to me that most of them was set up this committee and set up that committee, all what we call inputs of here's what you have to do. Now, it, as you know, I mean, it's easy enough to set up committees. <laughs> we, oh. do, we do this all the time. I'm interested in the fact that this is, is not Maureen's, uh, do, it didn't start on her watch, but ever since the um, Education Act of 1993, the Ed Reform Act, if you look at the record, we have barely moved the needle in terms of student achievement. Well, that is, well that's part and of that it too, and I want are, to bring Stephen, and that, that was something that you were talking about, Hilda, about, so when you said, you know, everybody's got to come together, I'm wondering who everybody is, and one of the things that was in those points too was the, uh, was uh, not a resource officer, a, what am I, uh, a diversity officer mm -hmm. yeah, but, that we're but, gonna need for the uh, schools. But again, that's an input. It do, that does not address, to me, it, it's a far cry from saying, okay, we're gonna have more Latino teachers to say that that is going to win, improve student achievement. We well, are in the bottom to, 10 percent. I think you have to have the, these in tools the in place, these systems in place. The question I have is, let's take a, a, a business approach uh, tack here. Not that <clears throat> a school, a public school system, is a business, but it can and should be run in a business-like way. And this suggests to me, just the, these four alone: chief diversity officer, hire one, release data related to student discipline at, uh, to the public. Uh, form an affirmative action committee, Latino advisory committee, form one of those. If you were in the business community and you weren't serving your consumers, your public, your customers, um, you'd be fired as the CEO or as the board of directors. So the question I have is, why they, they need to run this system in a more business-like way, not as a business, but in a more business-like way. And these are the, some of the tools that any business would use if they were serving this sort of a demographic. Steve, let, me, let me tell you though, what, what happens here, and I'm gonna go back to a point that I think that Roberta was getting at. I come out and I hire you with your personality, any of the three mm -hmm. of you, with your, with your strong personalities, and I hire you to be my CEO. I'm gonna pay you 240 grand to do it. And I'm gonna say, but you know what? Listen, I need you to do these 14 action points. Well, there should be a strategic plan. So the question there, is... There is one. We is, spent two right, years right. on this. So, so and, and why is this... Where was, was it before, and why, why is it only now being uh, implemented through uh, this uh, 14 uh, action steps? Uh, See, I think uh, a lot because, of this was being can, worked on behind the scenes. If, Go ahead, Hilda. But if I can work to the, uh, the, the specifically to the strategic point, what is the implementation? Where is the accountability? Right. So that's the first question. So if you don't have accountability in one side, people are going to go after and want accountability from a public sector. And so this is what these points are about, is accountability. It's accountability because, for example, the school department had an EEO officer uh, and that person left and that wasn't replaced. So that role isn't there. So when you're talking about equity and, and hiring uh, people, how are you ensuring that that accountability is in place if it's no longer there? And so to me, all of this is basically that. It's accountability to make sure that things are being done because they're not there. We don't know how this strategic plan is, 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 is being implemented. There is no public input to that. 
And when so, you see when you see these sort of key things only now being talked about, let's start implementing mm -hmm. them. That's why in the last show we were talking about the the school system being put into receivership, perhaps. That's why I think that it needs to be put into receivership. This this thing is rotten to the core. <laughs> to be to <laughs> be this fair, system is you broken. were talking about that. Or, I'm not. Or sure. I was. We were all, yeah. but we were all kicking well, around. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I suggest that. We, 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 we've only it. got one minute here, so let me say because we will be picking up on some of these issues in our in our next segment as well. But, uh, you know, whether we're, we're talking about uh, diversity officers, that the 14 points, is communication the problem? I mean, is, is communication still a, a lack of it? I see one nod, yes, I see one. What are you talking about? What, what is it? Uh, so you don't think communication is... Well, what do you uh, mean by communication? Do you mean the quality? I, I, superintendent the to the public, superintendent yes. well, the quality to quality of communication, to I groups. think, is not right. very good. Maybe the quantity right. of communication my, is there, but the quality of communication is To me, My bottom line is the ultimate goal of the Worcester Public Schools is to teach the students and in the case of Worcester, we need to raise the level of student right. achievement. Yes. Whether it's, whether it's um, you know, a, a, a Caucasian child, a Latino child, none of them is doing particularly well. Right. You right. see the data. Right. You know, that, that, I mean, Clive McFarlane, he's writing about education all the time. A lot of it, you know, I don't agree with, but he puts out this data, that's, the, these data that says that, that um, so the, the, the white students are reaching, 69% are reaching the level, the goal that they were supposed to. What about the other 31? I mean, in, in, what in are a, we talking about? That's a, a D at best. In a consumer so, marketplace, this would be considered consumer fraud. Yeah. Right. I, All right, let's so. pick it up there. And we'll pick it up with Dante Comparetto, school committee member, one who, who was really, I think, one of the, the flashpoints for everything that we are talking about here with what he brought up. He is not running. Uh, for re-election. We'll talk about what impact that has on the race and how that might affect some of the issues we're talking about here on Central Mass Chronicles. Jim McGovern has been in Washington, D.C. for so long that if you put him in a car and asked him to drive through Kelly Square, he couldn't do it. Who couldn't love a community that expects you to pull over and wipe your feet before you cross the town line. I just was in the mood for the Three Stooges and they weren't on, but you know what, it was lucky I came across the Worcester City Council meeting. It was great, I actually had more fun. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. City Councilor at large and school committee have more than a dozen candidates running. Worcester police are investigating a serious pedestrian accident. State lawmakers moving closer to banning cell phone use behind the wheel. Police make an arrest in connection to a fatal shooting Monday night. Reporters in the field and an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. Brents back to the wall, and that one is gone. Three, two, and that ball hit hard. Follow the Paw Sox all season long with select games from Charter TV3, and visit chartertv3.com for a complete game telecast schedule. Presented by Kentiani Insurance Agency, Bay State Savings Bank, and the law offices of Joseph J. Carigula. Central Mass Chronicles is, and as, as we say each week now, I mean, the, the conversation simply continues. We really are going to pick up right where we left off, but we're going to add another element, and that is, is that school committee member Dante Comparetto. It was his me email to his supporters where he talked about crazy amounts of a racism, and that got picked up as a headline, and, and I think led... I think in some ways led to the public knowing more about it. Steve, I'm going to say that a lot of these things were really being worked on behind the scenes for a long time, as I think we have all, all been saying for, for many years now. But that being a headline that was picked up by this week in Worcester, uh, school teachers taking umbrage at it and saying, what do you mean I'm not, I'm not racist? The explanation coming back, listen, there is this unconscious bias that exists. This is something that we need to talk about. He sort of was, was the catalyst. Uh, my own opinion is, is that a, a politician probably at some point would have said, okay, I took the two by four and I got everybody's attention. Now I'm going to sort of pivot and we're going to talk about it. I think that maybe he had decided that he wasn't going to run. And so I'm just going to go full bore with this and others can pick up the mantle and, and run with it. And maybe that's why he isn't in the race. But he never really did that pivot uh, that a politician would have done. He has just stayed on this message of, nope, 
there's this racism that needs to be addressed in the public school system. Well, he threw a Molotov cocktail and ran in the other direction and quit the fight. If you're going to start a fight, stay in it. Roll up your sleeves, get the work done. Nobody said it's going to be clean. Nobody said that rolling around in the mud is going to be fun. But if you don't have the guts, the stomach, to play that game, yeah, get off, get out of the, get off the uh, field. Well, Go back up into the stands. I think he started the wrong fight because it's not an issue of racism. The whole system, every, at every level of students, regardless of color, creed, um, whatever, height, weight, no, they're not doing well. And so if he had phrased it as, look, I'm appalled by the level or the lack of achievement of improvement in the school system, he would have had the entire school system, the entire student body. But would he have had the media? You've got to get the media's attention. So it's it's this, a bread and circus. Me, if you I, I come said, from the media. It's bread I don't, sorry, I don't even think he but meant to get their attention, attention that way, though. You know, I'm sorry. Racism, ra this is enough already well, what, because what, it's, it's what, overplayed. Whatever you want to call it, the institution is broken. Right. So, so if you say that, but you say it, it's about the whole thing, not just you know, uh, because then you've put, you've pitted one group against well, another. It's culturally, and that's, it's a that's cultural not, corruption going on. So what's the root not, of the cultural corruption? That is well, not going right. to get the attention. If you say, it, But it did look, get the attention. It did get the attention of people. <laughs> so it did get the attention, you but it's only a Worcester. You said you can pivot. Like, you can but say, it's the wrong message. Now that your attention, let's, let's right. chill out a little bit but and nobody, let's become nobody, more. Nobody I, is talking about the level, the poor level of achievement. And he had the opportunity to do that, but he took a walk. Right. So I think that. All scream race. I think that what this did, it, 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 it unveiled a lot, and it also unveiled the, the backdoor uh, politics of the city and how decisions are being made behind closed doors without the public. And so that's what people are talking about right now. Do you mean that with, with sex ed and Brian O'Connell exactly. on and, the school committee in, in a lot of fronts, not bringing the, it to a, to a vote in his subcommittee? Right, the transportation issue, the, the sex education issue, and, and the whole back and forth in, in the magazine between other people, you know, influencing elected officials. Um, it, it brings up a whole lot of points, which I think that having been on that same table, I think with Dante, the only thing is I, I did go back out and I, I tried to get reelected, but I knew I wasn't going to get reelected based on the conversations that were happening in terms of my positioning, right? So you, you, you know what you're up to and the oppositions. I think that, for example, you, I mean, for Dante or whatever, I don't know exactly why he pulled out. Um, however, it's just that you're frustrated with what happens behind closed doors. Well, then, the, right? then you really should fight because you got to sit right. at the table. See, I'm wondering saying right. if... Saying the system is institutionally racist when he knew that going in, did, right. did, so was he so shocked that So you're in there shocked? to change it. My, my, <laughs> that, that, my, the uh, only thing that I, that, that I would like say this? without having spoken to him is, you know, I wonder to give him the benefit of the doubt, hey, I'm going to blow this whole thing up. I'm not running again, so I'm going to blow this whole thing up. Somebody else can pick up the mantle because otherwise... Yeah, you had a seat at the table. Stay in the fight if that is what that's, your, that's, your you're right. fight that's is. destructive politics, okay. it's not but constructive that, But how politics. do you stay at the table when you know, uh, th th this is frustrating. But why Believe did you go to the me, table in the first table. place? Well, because he, he didn't know. Because you, you have. You would get reelected. You, you really have. Mean? I think he probably yeah. might have, you yeah. know. But because you have the, the, the like, he, well, he, when I ran, I thought you could make a difference. Right. You think that you could make a difference. Then you're in there, and you see how how items are are, are manipulated, and then you're like, I'm never going to have then a chance to change. Me, I got to tell you, Hilda, which to me is but, but even no, crazier. See, like, so to me is even crazier for open. Dante because Dante getting elected and the way that he did it and the amount of capital mm. that he put in himself to right. get elected. And then to walk away when he has people like Karaberg Powers right. and others who are saying, Dante, I'm coming to the fight. I'm going to run. Get me on there. Mm. Let's get John Monfredo off of there. Let's get Diana B. Yeah, Mario you can off change the votes. He and that had is, a bully um, pulpit. He no longer right, has that. So right. why would you give that I, up? And I, and I agree with that. When I was on the school committee, we did have four votes that, you know, civil, civil, you, you, could, you could change some things. It wasn't perfect, but still it's hugely frustrating. I can't even explain how um, backwards we are in a school committee. Can you do more here? good now being off of the school committee? I, yes, mm. I feel that I am. Okay, here's, yes. here's the headline. In the Massachusetts Education Reform Act of 1993, 
made a grand bargain with all the school districts across the state. And they said, we'll increase the amount of funding that we give you, every district, so that you're at a foundation mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. They kept their bargain. Over this 25 year period, the Worcester Public Schools budget has gone from 106 million to over 400 million, okay? And they said, in exchange, you are gonna raise the level of student achievement. We have flunked on that score. We are in the bottom 10% mm -hmm. of all school districts in the entire state of Massachusetts. We are. And that's the headline, mm -hmm. right. that in all these years, we have not shown, it, he says, uh, what is it that that um, uh, only 20 something percent of Latinos are achieving at the level that they right. should be, 29%. but only but only 69 percent of Caucasians. That's D but, uh, in but my the, book. I think the question is, can one member of a school committee or a city council or no, a state legislator, they need to, can they raise enough hell to draw attention to it? So Not that they're going to affect He didn't raise so, attention to this. He raised attention. Racism, ra so could, people have focused on that. Could he have over another term of have course, done that? Of course he could have. But he, that's not his interest. So, well, so he wants Latino students to improve, can, can, but, but he's phrasing it just in those terms. So he's setting up an us versus them. So you think he was looking for a short-term solution rather than a long-term solution? The whole system, I don't know, I'm back to Hilda saying one, that he got right, so second, frustrated. One second, right. one, 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 just one further thing. There are schools across the state and, and in other places, other urban districts, that have shown tremendous improvements. Right. You look at the, the, the Success Academy in, in New York, the, the charter schools, mm -hmm. but that even right. Moscow would say, same kids, and they are off the charts. Right. They are tops in the country. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we have a group of students who it's impossible to educate, but we refuse to look at what other districts are doing, and we know what they're Hilda, doing. Hilda, 60 seconds, but, so you right. got the last word right, on right, this. Right. Fix so, it all in 60 so seconds. I, well, so what I'm gonna say to you, Roberta, is in terms of education reform, right? So even though we have uh, more accountability, more funding, the, the fact of the matter is that the foundation budget has a huge deficit. And so that deficit comes in healthcare for your educators and your teaching workforce, um, special education, and also that that budget needs in the district. And I, I believe I gr agree with you that that could be shifted and that the district could do better. But we know that equity means- With the means, same resources, but with equity, the same resources, right. you give the your principals more authority, you but, give but, them but, total but let me, over hiring let me finish. and firing, I let you get finish rid of the it. union. Wait, I let you finish. <laughs> and what I wanna say is that Equity means that some kids need more supports to get them to right. the top. And that's what we are not doing in Worcester. We're not really leveling the playing right. field. Coming you know, up, what are you leveling it to, 69%? We're going to give our advice well, to, to graduates. But I will say this, after listening to all this, when he wrote crazy amounts of racism, in my mind I went, no there isn't, because of what I thought when I read that phrase. And I bet that phrase hit each and every one of us different. Everybody he sent that letter to, where he put crazy amounts of racism, read it and went, yeah, right, exactly because there are because people are experiencing that different but then you take it and you put it in a headline in this week in Worcester right. and all of a sudden everybody sees it completely in a in a different way but we will come back graduates get ready gather them around the TV because <laughs> they're going to get some great advice from our panel Hi, I'm Dale LePage. And I'm Jennifer Ann Kowiak from Charter TV3's entertainment show, WooTube. On every episode of WooTube, we bring you local music and comedy videos. Our monthly interview segment with music and comedy venue owners and the best upcoming events in your area. It's Central New England's music and comedy videos. Plenty of events you'll want to attend and so many places you'll want to be. WooTube. to make it better and we just say eh, that's what we deserve we're Worcester Elizabeth Warren 
is just about as warm as the shores of Lake Quinsigamon in January. Hey, there's been some big reform on Beacon Hill. Guess what? We don't pay state reps and senators to drive to work anymore. You missed it. All right. We're gonna, here you go, though. Here's what we're going to start, and here's what you are going to hear. We're going to begin with Roberta Schaefer. Oh, no. Roberta, can in front. Last? Can you go last? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I set this all up so that you would get your. Here's my advice. We'll all let right? her have the last word. I'll, I'll go first real quick then. Okay. I majored in, in, in history, and I loved every moment of just my liberal arts degree and every moment. And my dad may have had a point about being a dentist or a accountant or something as I am here later in life and look at my bank balance. So I will just throw that out there as perhaps some advice. All right, Steve, you get to go. You get to go first. If you're graduating from either high school or college, I say take through your 20s off. I mean, work. You get to work to make money and pay off your college loan and all that kind of stuff. But the world probably isn't going to take you seriously until you're about 30. So go live life, explore the world, we're going to be, you're going to be in the workforce until you're 100 years old anyway with the way the longevity is going, um, or maybe not, but uh, you're still going to be in for a long, long time. So why do you need to start when you're 21, 22, 24, 25? Go out and live life a bit. All right. Hilda, what's your advice to these graduates? I think it's the same thing. I remember that when I graduated high school, I wanted to go to Paris for a year. My parents wouldn't let me because they worried about that I wouldn't like the food. <laughs> so, you know, and I always regret that, that I didn't get to spend a year in Paris. But I went to business school. I graduated and I had a great job in the business sector. I don't regret it, but I worked ongoing for 17 years. And, and then I haven't taken a break since I started my professional life except for vacations but I really do feel that we all need a year off to explore life in other ways like traveling to me is just another way of learning and another way of really um, if you're going to be a teacher please go to different countries if right. you're going to be an urban teacher you got to check out these places where these kids come from because otherwise it's really hard to educate kids without knowing where they come from so that's my advice okay um so my advice is to forget all the things you've learned in college about this being <laughs> a racist, sexist, homophobic, horrible country that you live in because it is the best country in the world. It is the only democratic republic um, that has a written constitution which was specifically designed by our founders and they spent months during a hot summer in 1787 to develop this and so don't throw things out when you don't understand where they came from second of all we have the greatest amount of liberty that any of of any country the greatest amount of freedom of religion. You look at what's going across, going on across the world of destroying Christian communities, uh, destroying other kinds of communities, imprisoning people. You have all these opportunities. They just talked about travel. Well, you have to have some money first in order to travel, but you have opportunities that nobody else, that nobody else in the world has had, and you need to take advantage of them. them we have an exceptionally philanthropic world. All our museums, libraries, um, colleges and universities have all been uh, supported by private funds, not the government. There are some government institutions in there, state universities and so on, but for the most part, it's been money given by the, the money that's been made in the private sector. So don't knock the private sector. So all in all, we are an exceptional country, and you should appreciate it. It's also capable of reform when it's needed. That is it for Central Mass Chronicles. Join us next time. Thank you.